This is a Word Network special presentation. As a special gift from...
you put your hands together tonight and give the Lord a great big praise tonight we are here at global and this is viewed across these United States of America and around the world yes come on global let me hear you give God a shout of praise China South Africa Australia around the world around the world this message is going forth on tonight and I'm telling you it's going to be an exciting time in the Lord global ministries this this powerful powerful outreach is ministering to people around the world and before we move forth in the service tonight we want to go a little bit behind the scenes so that you can see that this is not just an organization where people are just coming together clapping hands dancing a little bit and going back out some exciting things are taking place in global under the leadership of Bishop Neil Ellis yes and so for a few minutes, we just want to carry you behind the scenes so that you could hear and see some of the fantastic things that are going on here at Global. Madam announcer, please tell us who we have tonight. Coming to the stage is Archbishop Jay Delano Ellis and Bishop James Woodson. There was prayer and fasting that took place long before we got to Baltimore. He believes and we believe that the church is supernatural in its origin and has to be supernatural in its operation. So what you saw last night was a display of what our bishop said in coming to Baltimore, two things that he heard God say. And that was the miraculous and the supernatural. And uh, both of those took place in this building. There are, there, are, there are not a lot of churches or a lot of conferences that you can go to that will take from the stage the principal and primary speaker. But after the Spirit of God moved with such force and power last night, the service was over. Wow. No, no one preached. God was in charge. God. God was in charge. Yes. And I think we need a little bit more of that in the body of Christ in these days. Absolutely. That's why, as we designed the global our bishop, we have provinces, and I know that most of those may be alien to some people in terms of their church culture, but we have provinces and regions. But the good thing about it, we have five metropolitan leaders. No state stands alone. 
in all of our provinces and in all of our regions, we have at least three states together, which is the concept, if any two of you can touch and agree. So in every province, we've got a number of states. By the time we get to global next year, I got in Greensboro, something is going to be going on. Put those hands together, Bishop Woodson. Standing next to me is what I believe one of the fathers of the faith. Some 28 years ago in Queens, New York, under the leadership of Bishop Caesar Sr. and then Roderick Caesar Jr., uh, uh, Bishop Ellis used to come and do all of our revivals. I was a young man coming up. And I remember in the transition of dad moving on and the son moving into place, one cold evening after a service, you told me, sit yourself down, focus yourself, and get up under this man. If you're gonna go far, you gotta have a leader over you. This afternoon, I exploded because I saw what's about to happen to a young man that you spoke to, which was sort of to me like a TCM, a Turner classic movie. I saw it before and it's about to happen again. And there's some people that don't understand and I just want you to go back to that place for a few moments. Well, <clears throat> let me say to you, Bishop Bloomer, uh, Bishop Woodson began to articulate the spirit of last night, let me go there first so I can segue into this morning. Last night, the atmosphere was set for God to throw his weight around, <laughs> literally. And I saw bishops lay aside their titles, their dignities. Um, I saw egos go under the benches while the people of God literally were prostrate before the Lord. And nobody said come to the altar. They came volitionally and were blessed. This house was blessed. I was just too stiff and too old to get down there. And I was afraid if I got down there, I wouldn't be getting back up no time soon. So I kept my seat and just cried and prayed and said, Lord, do this in all of our denominations. Just, just sling yourself around in our conventions in our gatherings. We're, 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 we're too stuck on our programs and on, on titles and calling folks names and, and seats, fighting over seats. I told them, I told them this morning about a message that I preached years ago. Little men in big seats. Two fellas brought their mama to see Jesus to ask for a seat on either side of Jesus. And Jesus broke their faces by telling them, if they can drink the cup I drink, mm -hmm. can they do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and then this morning, I watched the Lord pick the people up in the praise. And a, and a little young man, I don't want to call him a little boy. I think his name Tyler. I think it's Tyler or Tyus. Tyler. Tyler. Tyler was praising God. I don't know if you're here, Tyler. Wherever you are, jump up and run up here to me and then go sit down. I don't want you to start nothing, but if you're here, just come up here. Tyler, Tyler was being used of God to praise God. And at a certain point, I felt to say to Tyler, he had on the clerical collar, he's 12. He's 12 in a clerical collar. Now, let's be honest with ourselves. That's a little bit juvenile to be wearing a clerical collar. The collar is uh, nearly 2,000 years old. 
That's too old for a young boy. But I, I, I thought about Samuel in the temple. He wore an ephod at 10. My God. And Jesus confused the preachers at age 12. Yes. So I want to be careful. Yes, sir. I want to be careful while I say, uh, you know, a little too much. I want to be careful. I don't know exactly what God's doing. But I wanted him to learn spiritual government within himself. And I said to his people, to the saints that were here with him, I don't even know who you are perhaps his parents let him be a child full of the holy ghost but a child i can imagine that jesus shot marbles he played ball he i'm sure he did everything any normal kid would do uh, but to expect a child to be 92 years old at age 12 not fair so I told him play get good grades listen to his mother and father obey chase girls but but never catch them I told I didn't say catch one loose here catch one. I told him never catch them until he gets a license to catch them all right and that's way down the road hallelujah to God <laughs> but I enjoy talking to him now you wouldn't believe it some kids would have been mad with me from now till gathering next year. I saw that boy in the hotel, and he walks up to me and wants to talk while we're getting on the elevator. And I talked with him, and I enjoyed it. And I told him, I want you to meet my granddaughter. She's 12. And, <clears throat> and, Catch one. Yep, but... But but catch don't one. but don't catch her. Just just <laughs> just just meet my little beanie. Meet my little Sabrina, and uh, she's twelve and got the Holy Ghost and dancing and jumping, and y'all grow up together, write to one another and call one another, and who knows what the Lord will do. I I I, I won't mind a little dancing grandson-in-law. That's right. Y'all look for folks for your kids. Stop letting your kids go out and pick some old hoodlum, All right. some old crazy somebody. Pick them, pick them, right. pick them. All right, he's saying all right. All he said right. all right three times. That means shut up. <laughs> Put your hands together in Jesus' name. Madam announcer, who else do we have tonight? And global leader of prayer, Bishop Daryl Husband. Put your hands together for them. We go, we, we go way back. We, 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 we go way back, and uh, your assignment here in Global is evangelism. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening here in Baltimore this week. Well, first let me just say that we heard much about what happened in here last night, mm. and the power of God fell until it arrested us all. But the same thing happened in the streets mm. this week. And I believe Global United Fellowship ought to give it up for what God did in the city of Baltimore this week. We are so blessed. We are so blessed, Bishop Bloomer, to have a presiding prelate who understands that the power of God can't remain in this center. That he urged us to go out and make a difference in the city of Baltimore. In a time when there are 4,000 churches that are shutting down every year. Jesus. Over 4,000 churches are shutting down. In a time when 95% of our church members have never led one soul to Christ. Mm. In a time when 50% of the churches in America has not added one soul to their church membership in the past two years. Mm. In a time when people have a faith theology that says that I can be 10 miles wide and one inch deep, mm -hmm. anything goes and nothing really matters. In a time when people are saying, can I love Jesus and hate the church? My God. Our bishop commissioned us 
to hit the streets of Baltimore and make a difference in this city. When we got the word that we were coming to the city of Baltimore, the evangelism team and the prayer ministry of our fellowship, we began praying knowing that we were going to make a difference. And this week, we are so glad to report that about 80 people in a span of one hour touched over 500 people and five souls got saved. Somebody ought to say amen in here. Hallelujah. Now, now the number five is the number of grace. Yes. And we believe that when we leave Baltimore, that the grace of God is going to continue to cover this city and drug dealers are going to give up selling drugs and yes. prostitutes are going to get their lives together. And we thank God that families are coming back together and gangs will stop fighting wow. one another. We were able to go to the police department and pray right there at the police department where Freddie Gray um, was uh, arrested there. Yes. And we were able to go there and pray with police officers. Wow. And we wanted them to know that there has to be a relationship between public safety and the church. Because all of us should be about saving lives. Yes. And so we went to pray with them to let them know that God has value for every person. And that our prayer is that they save our community, help us to save our community, and be of service and protection to our people. And they were so welcoming for us to come. We also had a team at the harbor where they went down and they prayed with 12 police officers there, but they also touched souls from all over the world. So Baltimore just became a seat for us to touch people all over the world. We are Global United Fellowship, yes. and we thank God that our vision is coming to pass that our bishop gave us uh, to reach the globe. Very, very shortly, introduce this young man standing next to you. Yes, this is, this is Bishop Dura Husband, and he is the uh, director and the bishop of our prayer ministry, and we invited him to come, yeah. and he prayed in the mayor's office because principalities sit in high places. High places, yes. And we sent a team there to pray for the governmental officials. And I'm going to let him tell you uh, what that was like. Well, thank you for having us. I want to just first of all say our presiding prelate is a father, first of all. And he planted the seed of prayer into our fellowship. He said that everything we do has to be founded in prayer. And because of that, we, what we do all year long is send out prayer targets. Uh, we set up prayer agenda. We set a fasting agenda so that everything that happens in global happens before it happens. If you understand what I, I mean. I do. It takes place before the manifestation. So when we come to global, we're expecting miracles and blessings to happen in our fellowship because we've already been on our knees, been on our faces, and secured our bodies, amen, before the Lord. Let me say lastly this. When we went to City Hall, there was already a man there. His name is Gus. He's a, he's a minister uh, in Pastor Bishop Reed's church, and he's the one that gave the invitation and my God, the Spirit of God flowed in that office. Amen. We prayed over the government uh, of the city of Baltimore. And we're just believing that if my people who are called by my name, because the land follows the man. Woo. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let's glorify the Lord for a moment. We're going back into worship.
Give the Lord a praise in this place. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. Madam announcer, who do we have coming to us next? Well, that was the Global United Mass Choir, and now we have coming to the stage Global Pastor of Youth, Millennials, and Young Adults, Pastor Awalski Moore, and Director of Youth, Miss April Hawkins. Put your hands together for the young people. Come on, church. Now, I understand that y'all had some activities planned, uh, an after party, a pool thing going, uh, activities planned for uh, last evening, and uh, for whatever reason, that didn't happen. I understand that there were young people slain in the spirit and crying and laying all on the altars. And so uh, you, you got to tell us what's going on here at Global amongst the youth. Well, God is certainly gracious.
gracious and he's so kind to us. Um, we have come to understand that you can anticipate the presence of God, but you can never predict how he's going to move. All right. And so last night we were excited about, you know, just having a worship concert and um, we were going to go into an after party and just, you know, kind of keep things modern. And the Holy Spirit came in and he just took complete control. Um, the young people were yielded to him. They were open. And it really was the continuation of Wednesday. We began Wednesday with a worship session when we opened up. And so it was a great way to close and um, to leave for God to deposit. So you, said you said it was a continuation of Wednesday. Yes. What then happened Wednesday? So Wednesday morning, we had a joint session with the young adults and the millennials, the youth did. And God came in and he moved. Wow. And it was similar to the experience from last night, but it was only the beginning. So last night was the ending of what he wanted to do here with them this week. So it's sort of like the Holy Spirit has held this entire conference hostage to God's will this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Things are happening. And we need a move of God like that, especially in a city like Baltimore, because for a long time, principalities and powers and demonic forces have been ruling. And I believe that when the children of God come together and pray, principalities shake. Amen. Things happen. Amen. Who's your team? So our team is um, Merrick Deans. He is the director of the Young Adults. Mm -hmm. um, Pastor Martin McKay, he is the director of the Millennials. Pastor Alana McCarter, she is our executive assistant to our director. Um, Pastor Rakino Monker, he is our um, assistant to our director as well, and our director, Overseer Owaski Moore. Wow. People are watching you all over the world and across the United States of America. 96 million homes have the ability to tune in tonight. 200 countries are watching tonight. You say what to the youth and the young people of the world, of the nation tonight? We say that we are so encouraged by what God did here tonight and that we are waiting and anticipating your presence next year here at the gathering. God is going to do something bigger. He is going to do something better. We believe that you are equipped. You have the power of God within you to overcome every situation, to slay every giant, and to walk on serpents and scorpions and trample upon them. We believe by the power of God within you that you're going going to overcome, that you're going to win, and we are praying with you and for you for your victory. Thank you so much. Give them a great big hand clap on tonight. I think you can do a little bit better than that. I haven't been enjoying the responses of Global on tonight. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout for what he's doing here at Global. Yes, that's how you respond. Madam announcer, who's coming to us next? Put your hands together. There's not many people in the nation that doesn't know Bishop Howell Ray. Come on, put your hands together for this mighty, mighty man of God. Social, social justice. I understand that Gulf has uh, formed a social justice commission uh, and you're the chair. Can you explain to us uh, what that is and why that is necessary in this time and day. Sure. You know, years ago, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King made a very incredible statement. He said, any religion that professes to be concerned about the souls of men but is not concerned with the economic conditions that strangles them, the social conditions that cripple them, and the slums that damn them is a dry-as-dust religion. Mm. Here at Global, we aim to be distinctive, and under the leadership of our presiding prelate, we are designedly confronting injustice, intolerance, and inequities in every vestige, whether they're systemic or whether they're historical. And the Social Justice Commission, and these are a few of our commissioners, and we're delighted to have them standing. They represent different areas of our country. Our aim is not only to provide a comprehensive analysis, but to look at political and policing reforms that are necessary, to look at policing protocols that are necessary, to look at the industrial prison uh, complex that is now for profit, incarcerated 
incarcerating our black males throughout America, to look at international issues that are going on through the United Nations invectives, and to make sure that wherever injustice, intolerance, and bigotry is raising its head, that the church is taking an active, affirmative stance and making sure that we're not just reacting to symptoms, but proactively engaging solutions. Wow. I know you're going to be doing kingdom work until Jesus comes, but if you ever are looking for another job, <laughs> you could get a job doing voiceovers for Disney. <laughs> what a voice. What a voice tonight. Um, I want to say this uh, very, very quickly. Um, there's things happening in the streets. Yes. There's yes. things happening in the atmosphere. Yes. For the past eight days, every other day, something happens in the world. It is unbelievable. Yes. What is the church's position in this season? Well, first of all, and it may sound trite, but first of all, our position is always to pray. Because if we don't break it in the spirit realm, we shouldn't confront it in the physical realm. That's the first thing. Woo! Secondly, though... It is to become actively engaged with persons, and I should just take a moment to introduce Pastor Michael Fisher from Compton, California, Bishop Arnold Josie from the Caribbean, and Bishop James Dixon from Houston, all of whom, they are commissioners on the new Social Justice Commission, all of whom are active, not only in their communities, but with national strategies to make sure that the issues we're seeing come forth, which are really a reverberation of a larger pandemic. These are symptoms. By the time we're reacting, it's because we're reacting to something that has already boiled over that should have been dealt with in systems and policy formations long before we see them happening. We're seeing now the uh, frustration that has boiled over. We're seeing legitimate uh, avenues being taken or illegitimate avenues being taken because legitimate processes have left us out. Mm. And so what is happening now is that we're having to engage in the ways that we know that will get attention. Again, that's still a microcosm of what's really at stake. Our goal is to not only be active in those things. I know Bishop Dixon wow. is heartily invested in the industrial prison complex. That's not something that sounds as sexy as the marching in the street. But every day it is incarcerating at three times the level of Caucasians and, and other uh, persons in society. It's uh, incarcerating at three times the level when black Americans only represent 30% of our population. Well, that ultimately means if we take the man out of the home, we take out the father, we take out the economics, we take out the mentorship, we take out the development of the family as a system. And on and on throughout this, Michael is working heavily, particularly with millennial strategies. They literally shut down 48 intersections in the city of Los Angeles and gave out food and different things, but also had a prayer strategy yes. to bring attention. So we're not just marching to march, but we're marching with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, recognizing and wherever we go, we represent the kingdom. I want you to take, amen, amen, amen. I want you to take 30 seconds in your clothes, and I really, really want you to pray on this platform to the nations that we get structure back in the home. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. You are sovereign, you rule, and we stand, O oh God, in agreement tonight, declaring and decreeing that you rule. We bind the spirit of frustration. We bind the spirits, O oh God, that are seeking to bring devastation and divisiveness to not only this nation, but the nations of the world. We bind and declare inoperable the murder spirit, the spirit of greed. We bind it inoperable even now. And we declare and we decree tonight that our young people, O oh God, will not only see the way, but will walk therein, that our society, O oh God, will become a society of love. We thank you today, O oh God, for you declaring and decreeing over our lives, God, that if we walk there in the way, that God, you will show us the way we must go and what we must do. We thank you today for calling this nation, and we say unto this nation tonight, God, help us to be a nation of repentance, help us to be a nation of love, and God, we call the churches even of America to pray, for if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, we know that you will heal our land. Thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Put those hands together and give God praise on tonight. My God.
Madam announcer, who do we have coming to us now? We welcome to the stage the Vice Presiding Bishop at Large, Bishop Kenneth Ulmer, and the South African Leadership Team, led by Bishop Theo Noble, Apostle Douglas Bell, Apostle Henry Van de Zandt, and Apostle Oscar Hoffmeister. Praise the Lord. Who do you have with you tonight? Because I understand that the Lord is using you overseas. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for Global because tonight we're beginning to really, really see the vision of our presider. You know, you and I have talked several times about um, the dynamic of Global being Global and that God would have given and trusted Bishop Ellis with a Global vision and then couple that Global vision with a Global anointing mm -hmm. that that God has breathed life into this vision and breathed life at the speed of favor. The, the, the speed at which God is moving internationally, globally, is amazing. And it's something that only God can do. That God has, God has said that in, in the earth there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Seed has time and harvest in it. But then Amos comes along and says, but the time is coming when, when the reaper shall overtake the sower and the sower shall overtake the reaper. And I've seen Bishop working and laboring and working and laboring and sowing into the lives of others. I've seen God compress that time and to honor him and to honor those who hear not only his vision, but who hear his heart. It's one thing to catch someone's vision, but it's another thing to catch the heart of the person with the vision. And God has given us a leader who not only has a vision, but who has a heart for the kingdom of God. And those are the kind of people that God is adding to global literally around the world. And that's what we celebrate. It's this international global anointing that follows a global vision. Say that again. Nah, it's an, I don't know what I said. Uh, it, that God has, God has given not only an international global vision, but to that international global vision, he has anointed it and breathe in it and things are happening so fast i heard you mention that that we're talking now to over 200 countries, countries over yes. 200 countries in three years actually less than three years now god has given global over a tithe of the people watching here because there are 200 nations watching and there are over 27 almost 30 nations in global and we're barely three years old that deserves a praise right off Woo! down through there that 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 deserves an international global praise for the God who is bigger than a country and bigger than a city and bigger than a denomination and bigger than a culture we ought to just give God praise for how big he is and the anointing that is moving at the speed of favor ah, God I, I want to just introduce you know you know nah, what nah, I nah. hear and you know what I was hearing when you were speaking mm. speaking bad <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> the sheep are following the shepherd. I hear it. It is amazing how Hallelujah. the people and the men and women that God is joining to this fellowship. And, and that's what it is, the fellowship. And it, it's, it's, it's greater than an organization. I, I, I talk to people in, in, the, in the halls, and, and they're not talking about the organizational structure per se, and, and the collars and the colors and the cords and the ropes and stuff. They're talking about the kind of spirit that flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. That, that, that's bigger than an organization. It's a fellowship, and it's because we are following a man who has a vision and who has a heart. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 that we have, that Israel was baptized into Moses. You missed that. They were baptized into Moses. Mm, that, that's a forgotten baptism. I, I ain't got time for that right now. But, but they were baptized into Moses. And Moses had a vision. And those who were baptized into Moses were baptized into the leadership vision and anointing of that man. 
And that's what God is bringing together literally around the world for this man of God who has a heart for the people of God, a heart for the kingdom of God, and a heart for the work of the kingdom. And right off down there is a great time to give God praise for our founder. I, I, I want you to see how God is moving internationally very quickly because I want you to meet four men who represent an international event next year. Next year, for the first time, next year, Global is going on a major scale to the country of South Africa. The country of South Africa. And God has given us men who not only have the vision of what God is doing, but who also have the heart of our leader. I want them to just introduce themselves and let you know what position they are in. I bring greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I'm Apostle Bell. Um, I was the very first member from Global. I took four flights from Cape Town, South Africa to meet Bishop Ellis in the Bahamas. So I signed myself up and became the first Western Province leader in Cape Town, South Africa. Now we have 64 churches which have joined Global United Fellowship. Is this mic working? 64. Six, is this working? Hello. Hello. 64 churches. Come on and give God a praise, won't you? Ah, ah. I'm Apostle Henry van der Zand, and um, I represent the Western Cape for Global. And apostolically, I would just like to take the opportunity and tell His Grace Bishop Neil C. Ellis that his timing was spot on to come into Cape Town, South Africa. For many, many years, there was a prophetic anointing hanging over Cape Town, and there was an announcement made by many great giants of the faith that came into Cape Town that the great and the best, greatest next move that's going to take place in the globe is going to happen right at the tip of Africa, which is the Western Cape where we all reside from. I believe that Cape Town is pregnant with destiny. Cape Town is also called the mother city of South Africa. It is found at the most southern tip of South Africa, and I believe that God has directed the feet of Bishop Neil Ellis to South. The Bible says that the feet of a good man is ordered by the Lord, and I believe God is going to use him to usher in what God wants to do in Cape Town, South Africa. Somebody say Cape Town is in the house. Amen. God bless you. My name is Apostle Oscar Hoffmeister, a pastor of the senior ch the church, our Victory Kingdom Church in Keltrover. My assignment at Global is, to, is the Dean of Education in South Africa. Uh, there are two places in life you cannot miss. The one is heaven and the other one is Cape Town. <laughs> the problem in the body of Christ is not the devil. The problem in the body of Christ is ignorance. What we don't know limits us. But what we do know revolutionize us. I am so mindful that God will never give us more if we intend to give you less. And we thank God for this vehicle global and thank God for his grace, uh, Bishop Neil C. Ellis, that God is using in this season. I think for South Africa, in particular Africa, it's one of the most exciting periods of our lives. And we thank God for this uh, phenomenal fellowship. God bless you. We are excited and delighted for the latter shall be greater than the former. Praise the Lord. This last young man is based in South Africa, in Cape Town, but he is our ambassador. He is our representative in a land beyond there, and I want you to meet him right now. My name is Bishop Theo Noble. Um, I was introduced to Bishop Ellis by Bishop Omer, uh, and uh, if Bishop tells you you receive someone, you receive him. He said, my friend is coming, and I want you to aim out, and I'm so glad that we had Bishop Ellis come over, so now I oversee Asia and the Middle East, and I'm excited to serve. From America to South Africa, from South Africa to Asia, from Asia to the Middle East, from Middle East around the world. You ain't seen nothing yet. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And since you know he's going to do it, somebody help me praise God for what he is about to do. God bless you. If 
855-730 word 855-730 word those of you that are watching around the world it is your faithful supports and gifts that makes nights like these very very possible we are so glad and so happy to be a part of global and it is about to take off put your hands together My Global United Fellowship family. It is once again my esteemed pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this final evening of the 2016 Global United Fellowship Gathering all the way from the charming city of Baltimore, Maryland. Put your hands together and let's bless God for this 2016 gathering. You would indeed agree with me that this week has been phenomenal. We can attest that every session, every class and every worship experience has been nothing short of transformative and glorious. Do you agree with me? And although we are in this final evening, trust me when I tell you that we have not seen anything yet. And so at this time, we want to once again acknowledge you, our delegates. So whether you've come from any of the four continents, the 27 countries, the 38 states in the United States of America, the eight islands of the Bahamas, or any of our 700 churches, we welcome and appreciate all of you. I'm so glad this evening that our denominations, our doctrines, and our traditions did not prevent us from getting together and celebrating diversity, unity, and family. Give yourselves a round of applause. And we're going to just take a moment now, stand with me all over this auditorium, and we're going to greet our brothers and sisters for the final time this year, hug them, love on them, and let them know that they are important to this fellowship. Come on, let's fellowship. Let's take this moment to do just that. Let them know how important they are to this fellowship. And do it with a smile, family. Do it with a smile.
Amen. Amen. As we continue global, we must also admit that this week has been extra special for all of us because we've had the awesome opportunity and privilege of meeting and fellowshipping with so many extraordinary leaders, partners, sponsors, and guests. And so once again on this final evening, we want to recognize and bless God for these special persons who've come to share with us this evening. And so once again, we want to acknowledge all of our visiting bishops and pastors. Put your hands together and let's bless God for them. We have in our midst the Counselor General for the Bahamas located in Washington, D.C., the Honorable Paulette Zonical. So good to have you. Let's bless God for her. We are also delighted to have with us the Minister for National Insurance and Labor in the Bahamas, the Honorable D. Shane Gibson. Let's bless God for him. And of course, Global, as you've heard already, there are millions across the globe who are watching us live via the Word Network. So come on one more time, Global. Let's give it up for our viewing audience. We're so happy to have all of you joining us. And so you special people, on behalf of our presiding prelate, His Grace Bishop Neil C. Ellis and First Lady Ellis, and all the tiers of leadership and this global family, we want you to know that we appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your support, and we appreciate you sharing in this special moment with us. And so God bless you. Do enjoy the rest of the service. And once again, welcome everybody. And I'll see you next year in Greensboro, North Carolina for the 2017 Global United Fellowship Gathering. God bless you. presiding Bishop of Global United Fellowship, Bishop Leonard Smith. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a privilege to stand and to introduce, but really to present our distinguished presider of the Global United Fellowship. I happen to be browsing the internet and I discovered in uh, April 10th, on April 10th, uh, 2010, on the preaching.com, the publishers of the preaching magazine, they listed the 25 most influential preachers of the past 25 years. When I browsed through the list, I discovered the names of only three preachers that were of color. There was Gardner C. Taylor. William Augustus Jones, and E.K. Bailey. I began to think about it, and I fast-forwarded to April the 10th, and I thought I'd go a few years ahead, somewhere around mm, 2035. It is my belief that when the next list comes out, that if they're going to record the names of the most influential preachers of the past 25 years, I will protest if that list does not include the name of Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The reason I will protest is because Certainly he is influencing our age, he's influencing our generation, and his name will be listed in the annals of history 
and we will remember years from now that an impact was felt across the world because of one man's vision and dream. I believe that the greatest thing that Bishop Neil C. Ellis has ever done was to establish the Global United Fellowship. And I am proud tonight to present to you whom I consider one of the most influential men in the entire world, our presiding prelate who's going to speak for himself as he declares the word of God to us tonight. When our presider approaches this lectern, we know what to do to recognize a great man of God. Before he comes tonight, we're going to be blessed by the music ministry of one of our metropolitan bishops, one that we all know, love, and appreciate, none other than Bishop Marvin L. Sapp. Grace and peace, everybody. Did anybody come to help us lift up the name of Jesus this evening? Touch somebody on your right or your left. Look at them and smile. Some of y'all ain't smiled since last year's meeting. And while you're smiling at them, tell them, say, neighbor, after this, I declare and decree that the rest of your days are going to be the best of your days. Now, if you believe that, come on, clap those hands and give me praise tonight. I have a very simple assignment. I have a very simple assignment. My assignment is literally to prepare the ground of your hearts so that when the seed of the word is sown, it doesn't fall upon the stony nor the thorny ground of your hearts, but it may fall upon fresh ground where it may be cultivated and grow. My assignment is simple. My assignment is to be the spiritual rototiller to get all the mess out of the way so that when the man of God stands up here, all he should have to say is Jesus and deliverance is supposed to break out in this place. So I'm going to do what I came to do. I'm doing what I came to do. Now, and I know there was some stuff I want to sing, but more than likely what I want to sing, y'all don't want to hear. So I'm going to go ahead and try to sing some songs that you all may know and you want to hear. Can y'all help me tonight at least? Just touch somebody and tell them, say, no matter what you go through. Y'all still looking at me. I said, touch your neighbor. Say, no matter what you go through, you got to learn how to do this one thing. Let's see. Let's see if they remember this. Let me see if y'all remember this song. Y'all gonna help me tonight? It goes so like this. I've had my share of ups and downs. Times when there was no one around. But God came and spoke these words to me. Praise will confuse the enemy. Sing it with us. I've had my share. Come on, sing it. Oh, times when there was. But God came and these words to me, praise will confuse. So I started singing, and then, and then, see people laughing, they knew my problems, y'all. with my hands that's why I praise him in dance he's given me a second chance come on let's raise him in oh, 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 saw the mess in me when everyone else around, 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 around. 
could only see, only see the worst in me. I wish I had a witness in this place today. Help me sing. He saw the best in me, Lord, and everyone else when everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Does anybody have that testimony tonight? Say, I gotta know. Say, I gotta, gotta know. He saw the best in me, oh, when everyone else, when everyone else. in me can I sing my verse one time can I sing my verse one time he is mine and I am his it really doesn't matter what I did he only sees me for who I am oh 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 he's my it doesn't matter what I did He only sees me But who I am Help me sing it He is mine I am his He is mine It doesn't matter No, 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 no He only sees me He your spirit follow follow me wherever I go please let your spirit your spirit follow 
we stand together tonight we certainly give God praise for our time together and we honor him and love him cause to our vice presiding bishop at large Bishop Alma and Lady Alma and our suffragan bishop Brooks and Lady Brooks our apostolic aid Bishop Woodson and Lady Wilson 
our vice presiding bishops Makata, Lady Makata, Bishop McKissick, who is doing much better today. Thank the Lord. And we encouraged him to stay in tonight, uh, but to him and his dear wife, Kim, and to Bishop Ray and Lady Ray, and uh, to our Bishop Showell and Bishop Leonard Smith, and thank you so much for your kind introduction. Our Executive Secretary, Dr. Harold Carter Jr. and Lady Carter, our Executive Treasurer, uh, Bishop Gresham and Lady Gresham, other members of the Executive Council and members of the Governing Council, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Apostolic Fathers, uh, Bishop Ellis and uh, uh, Dr. Ellis, uh, to all of the members of the Coalition of Bishops and Apostles, our pastors and delegates and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be here. It is good to be here. Of course, I want to take a moment to recognize Patrice, my wife of 33 years. And um, my children who, write, who sit right in the back of her. Uh, my tall, handsome son, uh, Jonathan, who claims so many girls were after him this week. <laughs> this is the most excited I've ever seen him about church from his lifetime. He just, just getting ready before me. Jonathan, where you going again? Got to go to the youth meeting, Dad. Got to go to the youth meeting. I said, oh, wow, they having something again. I don't know, but I just won't be there in case. I said, all right. And of course, to Renisha, who just graduated from college this past May. And is already making her mark in the media world two weeks out, and she is a full time worker. And we give God praise. Of course, to the more than 500 Bahamians who journeyed here to Baltimore with me, God bless you. Yes, uh, to the father of our fellowship, uh, the one and only the incomparable, our bishop, our father, Bishop Murphy Sr., William Murphy Sr., and to the mother of our fellowship who is not here tonight, but I know she's watching, would you help me say hello to our mother, Mother Mattie Taylor? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And then I want to say thank you. We're going to pray in just a moment. I want to say thank you to uh, Bishop Carolyn Shewell and uh, Dr. Harold Carter and Bishop Joel Peoples, the chairperson and co-chairperson of our steering committee and all of the members of the steering committee for a job well done here in Baltimore. Oh, what a smooth week this has been. Thank you so much. And then, of course, uh, I got here a week ago last Friday. And ever since I got here, uh, they have spread the red carpet for me. And uh, my family felt it after they got, got here. They were just so kind to us. And we are so very, very grateful. Uh, but even before I got here last Friday, Pastor Delton and members of the advance team from some states in America and then across the Bahamas. They were in here from last week, Wednesday, making sure that everything is in order. Would you help me thank God for the global team? The global team. And ladies and gentlemen, it takes so many hands, so many hands for this kind of effort to go off with such a high standard. Uh, we had more than 300 volunteers from four different countries coming together as family to pull this off. I need you tonight because, you know, this is a young fellowship, so we don't have any money to give them. And we don't have anything to send them out on a celebration or anything. This is it right here. So I need y'all 
to give them a good five second party yeah. thank you thank you thank you and then before you take your seats I have to say a wonderful depth of appreciation to a young man you know when I was younger I, I used to shut my mind up towards things that I didn't quite understand or believe in and as I got older I recognized that you have to be broad-shouldered and broad-minded you've got to open up your spirits because God has people all across this world who may not think like you and I'm so glad I met a Jewish man some years ago his name is Kevin Adele he is the president of the word network ladies and gentlemen before you give this wonderful applause to Kevin the president uh, and, and of course you know we are live on the word network tonight touch your neighbor real quickly and tell them free of charge yeah yeah and uh, I don't know I, I don't know how many more people are doing a greater job than Kevin Adell through the word network of reaching people around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ I need you I need you I know you've given God your best praise but right under that tonight uh, and they carried us live last year and ladies and gentlemen I need to help you with something else last year they had one of the biggest viewerships ever in its history on a Friday night last year at the closing night of the gathering consequently they allowed me to have my telecast on free of charge for the whole year from last year August to right now and then we're back here live tonight I want you come on global I want you to say thank you to Mr. President Kevin Adele for his kindness and for his love we love you Kevin keep doing what you're doing and we we're gonna stand behind you with our prayers and with our support now if you will please join hands with your brothers and sisters reach right across the aisles right across the aisles close up all the gaps tonight this is our final watch our father in heaven we give you thanks wow you've been good to us this week and just as you have promised us you fulfilled your promise we've seen all week long the miraculous and the supernatural and not only here in the parent body but we've seen your hand at work among our youth and our children thank you for those who received the message of salvation in our children's meeting this week You've been kind to us and we are grateful. And now, Lord, as you've given to us this moment, help us to maximize it. And as we come together for this final word from you this year, speak to us. If you speak, we shall listen. And when we listen, we shall obey. Now, Lord, I pray for everybody whose hands are being held right now. I press power into their lives. I press the spirit of victory 
and prosperity and we declare no matter how you bless us tonight we promise you at the end of it all we shall give you the glory for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever and all of God's people say amen squeeze your neighbor's hand and tell them this is your night tonight amen you may be seated I want to call your attention tonight to an Old Testament passage of scripture. It's found in the 14th chapter of the book of Judges. Judges chapter number 14. I'm reading verses 1 through 4. And these verses will form the basis of my text tonight. Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I've seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren? Or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know, Bishop Alma, that it was of the Lord. That he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. I, I don't have a real pretty subject tonight. It's, it's just four words, the will of God. I want you to look at somebody and shake their hands real joyfully and tell them, I'm going back home in the will of the Lord. A consultant who traveled to more than 100 countries and thank you Bishop Sapp for preparing the way for us tonight a consultant who traveled to more than 100 countries doing his work kept a private survey of the questions he randomly asked people during his times of travel question number one what is the most important thing in life to you? The answer that he received over and over amounted to this one statement. I want my life to count. The second question that I wish to lift tonight from this survey is what is your life's greatest fear surprisingly very few people said things like death or terminal illness or public humiliation or having to live life alone the most frequently given answer was this a fear that they would die without reaching their fullest potential Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you tonight that one of the greatest tragedies in life is not what dies in you at death, 
but what dies inside of a man while he lives. There is something on the inside of each of you given to you by God, hear me, at conception. And it has something to do with your future. And tonight I want to say to people around the globe, it matters not what is happening in your life as I speak to you. The word of the Lord is, get excited about your future. Your purpose in life is greater than you. And it's longer than your lifetime. I need you to hear this now. Those of you in Canada, hear me. Those of you in the United Kingdom with all of your issues and your worries and your cares, hear this man of God. What God has purpose to do in my life and in yours this year is not expected to stop with me and you. What God is doing for you under the sound of my voice is bigger than you. As a matter of fact, it has generational implications. Mark Twain says one time, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. This is the hour, says the Lord of hosts, that I am bringing great change into the hearts and minds of my people and at the same time I am changing their circumstances says the Lord of hosts I'm not gonna bother you much tonight because this message will speak for itself but one of the 19 times I will bother you just joking I want you to find one of your neighbors for real and shake their hands with an attitude and tell them things are changing While things are changing, I need you to know as I jump into this text that God has not changed his mind about your future. That's why it's important for you not only to know your purpose in life, but you should know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. It's been a long week, brethren, so I need your help now. A theologian said one time that it is very simple to understand if something is God's will for your life or not. All you have to do is answer three simple questions. Question number one, Patrice, is it scriptural? Question number two, Renisha, is it the desire of your heart? And question number three, Jonathan, is there a need? If the answer is no to any of these questions, then it is more than likely not God's will for your life. <laughs> His will is good. His will is accepted. His will is perfect. And so it's here in this text that we see the catalyst of circumstances that released Samson into his destiny. Here in the text, he's a young man that has not yet determined what his purpose in life is is at this point in the text he's living his life based upon his passion alone 
However, it is through his passion that he bumps into his purpose. In this text in Judges 14, Samson was a Hebrew boy. Born at a time when the Philistinian people had seized the Hebrew people and their property. While they were under siege by the Philistinian people, Samson had the nerve, the audacity, when he came of age to fall in love with a Philistinian woman. At the time of this text, it was ridiculous for a Hebrew boy to dare to think that he could marry a Philistinian woman. In the text, his passion has taken such a leap <laughs> that he now wants to marry a woman from among the people who are dominating the Hebrew people. And not only does he want to marry her, he wants his parents to feel good about it. And not only that, uh, Bishop Ellis, but he wants his daddy to help him set things up. Of course, his parents, Bishop Woodson, is less than happy about it and challenges him by questioning him as to why he would not marry someone from the house of Israel. They drilled him into trying to understand why he had to fall in love with a Philistinian woman and complicate his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to throw this out there. Life is complicated. For the most part, we are composite of strengths and weaknesses, victories and defeats. Life is complicated for us. Here we are, we are overcomers in one area and we are being defeated in other areas. We have clear direction about what we ought to do over here, but we are confused with what we ought to do over there. Life is complicated. Powerful on one hand, weak on the other hand. And no one really understands fully what's going on in your life but God. The young man is insistent. He's radical. And his parents are confused about it. But look at what the Bible says in verse 4. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines for at the time they had dominion over Israel. His parents did not know that their son's complicated desire was in the will of God. If you know anything about this story, you will know that it didn't work out the way Samson wanted it to. They never married. And I always thought that if something is of the Lord, it had to work. How can something be of God and fail? If you don't mind, I, I want to just get in your business for a minute and, and ask you, have you ever done something that you thought for sure was in the will of God? It passed all the tests you put it through. You knew you heard God. You knew you saw the signs. You knew you had the confirmations. So on the strength of your conviction, you stepped out. You did it and then all hell broke loose. And you said, but God, I thought it was you. 
I thought it was you that led me to that job. I thought it was you that led me into that direction. I thought it was you that sent me on that assignment. I thought it was you that gave us this child. I thought it was you that told me to step out and start the business. I thought it was you that brought us together in marriage. But I don't understand. How can something be in the will of God? And go so wrong. I'm more than halfway done with this little message here. Let me let me help you understand something parenthetically about the will of God. The will of God is not sent to please you. Mm-hmm. The will of God, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to uh, disappoint you, but it is not sent to bring you fulfillment. I want you to hear me in the Bahamas. The will of God is not sent to make you comfortable. The will of God is not sent to make you have bragging material. The will of God is not a warranty from God that you will have no challenges in your life. As a matter of fact, divine redemption does not mean trouble-free exemption. The will of God is sent to drive you to the place where you need to be in order to do the things that God has assigned to your hands. Ah, somebody got to help me. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, I need you as you get ready to go back home in the will of God. Understand that the will of God can get you in all kinds of trouble. I'm beginning to hear a sound in my ear now. Yeah, the will of God sent Daniel to the den of lions. That, that was the will of God, people. That was the will of God. The will of God sent the three boys into a fiery furnace. That was the will of God. The will of God sent Jesus into the wilderness to be confronted with the devil. And he almost died in the will of God and then eventually the will of God sent Jesus to the cross where he did die in the will of God the Bible says that his parents knew not that it was Woo! the will of God. I'm, I'm, I'm close to finishing. Ah, oh, so we see this boy. Hmm. Yeah, he's 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 uh, he, Dr. Smith. He's, he's on his way down to Timna. And, 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 and he's on his way there, Sabrina, to make uh, uh, this connection and to prepare for the, watch this now, the seven-day engagement party. Lord, have mercy. On his way to meet her, the young man is confronted with a young lion. Ladies and gentlemen, just let me pause here to tell you, anytime you are endeavoring to do the will of God, there will be confrontation. Now, you know what? I just, I just, I just kind of got a download here. Uh, I, and here's what I'm sensing the Holy Spirit saying. Now, wherever you are, across this world and in this auditorium, I, I need you right here now to... Understand 
that because by the end of this message you're going to be swept into the will of God, I want you to understand that you are about, yes, with all the blessings that's coming, you are about to deal with a major confrontation. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying, now, Ellis, tell him, pause now and give me a praise for the victory. Oh, it is coming. I need you to know. You are not going to avoid this time of confrontation. But if you can give God the praise now, your praise is going to be your vehicle to your victory over your confrontation. I wish I had somebody. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha! The young man, Bishop De Anza, is confronted with a young lion, Bishop Vaughn. Watch this now. <laughs> Both him and the young lion are at the apex of their strength. He's young and strong. And so is his confronter. The lion is young and strong. And now the challenge before him Provoked the power within the lion begins to roar, and it took the roaring of the lion for Samson to become aware for the first time of what's on the inside of him. Roar, lion! Show them what you did. Show, show, show the people what you did. If it had not been for the roaring of the lion, there would have been no release of power. As you get ready to go into the second half of this year, start praying that the lions won't roar because it's going to take the roaring When God puts a lot of power in you, I want you to hit yourself on your chest real quickly and tell yourself there's a lot of power up in here. Now, no, those of you in the auditorium, you, 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 God is using you tonight to help transfer this to people who are watching via the telecast. Get an attitude, hit yourself in the chest and tell yourself there's a lot of power up in here. When God puts a lot of power in you. He permits a lot of lions to roar and come after you. And the lions that come after you will force the power in you to come out of you. I need you to shake hands with somebody and tell them my power is getting ready to come out. When the lions roar, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came upon him. My God, he was confronted with the lions, but nothing went his way. And he declared and decided that if the lions didn't roar, I would never know what's on the inside of me. I 
hate to tell some of you, my brothers and sisters, that there's a power on the inside of you that's getting ready to come out over the next 21 days, but it will not come out without the assistance of the roar of the lion. Samson, please be seated. I'm just about done. Samson had to be Bishop Middleton. Samson Bishop Brooks was confronted with this lion while he had nothing in his hands. just now he was in Shelton the will of God and had no ammunition the lion is coming after him every time the lion roared the lions were saying look at that fool coming after me nothing to fight with look at him but the bible says he beat that lion so bad he didn't beat him until the lion ran he didn't beat him until the lion limped he beat the lion to death Watch this, with nothing in his hands. Man, man, I, I, y'all gotta excuse me because I'm. This is starting to work on me. But, but I need you. I need to. I need you to act for a moment that the confrontation you will face over the next 21 days, you will whip without any kind of tangible help. Nothing's in your hand. I, I don't I don't I don't see a roll on your face. I don't I, I don't see the anger on your face. You're about to whip your lion with nothing in your hands. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. To whom God will give the victory, watch this, over the lions in your life every time over the next six months. Lord have mercy. I hope somebody in Africa caught that. I hope somebody in Jamaica got that. But I know the people in the auditorium get that. We need to start right now in this auditorium giving God an August shout, a September shout, an October shout, a November shout, a December shout, a January 2017 shout. Because every lion that roars in your life between now and then, you will whip them with nothing in your The Bible says, as the lion roared, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. I need to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, those of you get it. Y'all watching me, just hold on for a minute. I'll be right back to you. Those of you watching, just hold on for a minute. But those of you in the auditorium, this is what Tuesday night was about. Wednesday morning and Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And yes, last night, it was for the spirit of the Lord to come upon you for your next round of confrontation. If you are standing in front of me, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you're feeling. I don't care what's in your body. I don't care what with your concern as a man of God. This is not a prophecy. This is an announcement. The spirit of the Lord is now upon you. Oh my God, y'all didn't hear me. 
Lord, they didn't hear. All right. You said, say it again. Yes, Lord, I'll say it again. With all of your cares, with all of your concerns, with all of your issues, during the course of this week, the Spirit of the Lord came upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You better take a moment right now and give God the glory for his power and his spirit. Because this next round of victory is not coming by might, nor by power. But you can get the victory by the Spirit of the Lord. You need some reinforcement. Grab any one of your neighbor's hands, shake it with an attitude, and tell them a new spirit is coming upon me right now. Those of you watching me around the world, come on back now. Come on back. If you got somebody in your house or in your hotel room or anywhere you are, grab a hold of their hand, shake them, tell them, I feel something coming on me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I don't feel it, lad. Let, let me help you understand something. Let me help you understand something. Uh, I know God. He works with different people. Different ways. Uh -huh. I am one of those. My membership will tell you. I watch. The pattern of God. I know how he deals with me. Lady Moore. And one of the ways God deals with me, Brother Thompson, is like this. He allows me to see the service I will preach to before I get there. Not all the time, but every time he needs to. And when he does that, it's because he wants to show me the end result so I would not be deterred by your in-between now I know what I saw when I talk about the spirit came came upon him and I know what I saw when I made the announcement that it's coming upon everybody who's in this building here tonight but the result I saw differs from what I saw before and we ain't going no further in this message until I see what I saw because if the Lord didn't want me to see it in here he wouldn't have showed it to me before I got here let me start all over again rewind but here we go if you're in this auditorium tonight I have come to announce that the spirit of the Lord is rising upon you All right, I gotta say it again because I still don't see what I saw. I have come to announce that the Spirit of the Lord is rising upon you. It's coming upon you for a special assignment because your next confrontation, the way you will get the victory, is not by might and not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Go find two or three people and tell them, it's coming upon you, it's coming upon you, it's coming upon you, it's coming upon you. Now wherever you are right now, stop right there and grab all of that person's hands, both hands, and tell them, give me 15 seconds and let me celebrate your next victory. Go ahead. With your brother. With your sister. I want to help you celebrate your next victory. Shut that up, oh, call sin, and then they can't say, ah, yes, Lord. I gotta help you celebrate your next victory. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. It's not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Send the Lord of hosts. This is the 
season that God is bringing great change. Oh, how much. Okay, I've seen it now. You can sit down. I, I see it now. I see what I saw. I said I now see what I saw. Can, can you just give me a bonus? Say bonus. Say bishop. This next phrase is a bonus just for you being able to see what you saw. All right, I'm good. You may take your seats. Give me 10 more minutes. I'll be out of here. Shatamoko said M-A-K. Woo! Go ahead, take your seats. Take your seats. Y'all get me them nervous. Go ahead, brethren. I'm too nervous right now. Y'all, y'all please. Take your seats. Take your seats. Go ahead. Go ahead. Patrice. Patrice, set the example. Take your seat. Take your seat. Bishop Alma, you my brother. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Just, just learn how to be obedient. Just, I ain't moving until y'all sit down. Yeah, yeah. My brothers and sisters, please hear me. Over the next six months, keep your eyes open. Be careful. Over the next six months, that you do not allow anybody to distract you. What God said, and I truly believe that where you are now and what you are experiencing now and what you have in your lives and your ministry right now is minuscule when compared to where I am satisfied that God will take you and for what I'm feeling God wants to do in you, with you, and through you over the next six months. I need you now to saturate this atmosphere. You don't even need a neighbor. Just get it out of your mouth and tell, tell the atmosphere some things are getting ready to happen in my life. <laughs> Let me see if I can close this. Samson to Gotham beat the lion to death. With nothing in his hands. I'm preaching to some people right now who have literally during the first half of the year been to hell and back. The way the lions roared in your life between January and June. And for you to come to these opening days in this second half of the year in the right frame of your mind is a miracle itself. Ladies and gentlemen, if only for January to June, you have a right to praise your God. A right to show your hand up and a right to open up your mouth and let every principality and power in the atmosphere hear that you are still alive. But I must hasten to remind you. You're going back home in the will of the Lord. 
But the lions in the second half of the year will still roar. But when the lions roar this time, you have two choices. Either fight or flee. Confront it or run from it. Live or die. They only choices. Either you lay down and play dead, or you tell the lion, wait up. This ain't over yet. And I need about 3,000 of y'all in here to get in your spirit a this ain't over yet attitude. Somebody in Jamaica, get that spirit. Somebody in England, get that spirit. Tell the enemy it ain't over yet. Samson never gets to marry the woman. God never intended the relationship to work the Bible said he was simply seeking an occasion to move against his enemy and for God to move against his enemy he had to plant Samson in the midst of the enemy and the best way to do it was to work with his passion He only meant for the relationship to move Samson into position. God could not get him into this higher dimension without letting him get through this failed relationship. And it was all in the will of God. Don't allow the cares of this life to keep you in a rut. Before you go back home tonight or tomorrow, accept your past failures. Make a note of the lessons. Acknowledge your mistake and for God's sake, move on. Stop crying over spilt milk. Your past is your past. Let it go. And move on. Stop complaining about your old church. You're out. Now move on. Stop complaining about those who let you down. You're still alive. And some of them dead. Now move on. There's so much ahead of you. For you to waste time. Dealing with what's behind you. Lord have mercy. Wherever you are in this world. This is the day. That the Lord has made. Rejoice. And be glad in this day. All things have passed away. Lord have mercy. And behold all things are becoming new. Somebody praise him for the newness of life. Move on with your careers. Move on with your dreams. Move on with your family. Move on with your life. Let me talk to some single mothers for a moment who are raising your child or children by yourself because the father was never really serious about you anyway matter of fact you there still worrying and hoping he turned around and he's already married. <laughs> Sweetie, let it go. 
move on. Let me let me help you. And this ain't in nowhere in the message. It just it just a download. Let me just help you real quickly. Let me tell y'all something about us men. If we love you, nothing could keep us from you. But if we don't want you, nothing could draw us to you. Even if we've already laid with you. If three weeks have gone by and you haven't heard from him, honey, you heard from him. Now don't be foolish. Move on. He's trying to tell you. He don't want you. Stop losing sleep over someone who don't have enough sense to know your value. Okay, let me go back to this message and close it up because my time is just about gone. So Samson is on his way to Timnah. <laughs> and as Samson's getting close now to where, he's on his way back from Timnah now, pardon me. He's on his way back from Timnah. As he's getting close to where he fought the lion, he hears the sound of bees. And the closer he gets to the place of his most recent victory, the more bees he sees. When he gets up now on the dead lion, he notices that the defeating of the lion has created a place for the bees to work from. The bees are now living in the place of his latest victory. Which means then, theologian Alma, that the victory was not about him. But it was to create a place for the bees to work from. And this was all in the will of God. When he gets close up on the place where the bees are buzzing, he looks at the carcass of the dead lion and there it is. Honey is coming out of the place of his greatest struggle hit somebody real quickly and tell them the bees are coming yeah, yeah, yeah. honey is all up in there so the fight lord I got to go home with the lion was a fight for the honey Whenever God spoke to the children of Israel about the promised land, he always spoke about a land flowing with milk and honey. Honey speaks of abundance. Honey speaks of blessings. Honey speaks of favor. The Bible says when he saw the honey, he dipped his hand and scooped up some honey and started to eat the honey. There's no way you could go through all the hell you've been through the first six months without getting some honey in the next six months. For all of your struggles this year, for all of the tears you shed this year, for all 
what the hell you've been through this year. The Lord told me to tell you, get in your scooping position. Because this next half of the year is honey scooping time, baby. I want you to stand to your feet real quickly because I'm about to close. And I want you to look at somebody, open up your eyes as wide as you could and tell them, I hear the sound of bees. Mm. Honey. I'm so tempted to get happy right now but I have this assignment and while you are standing I want you to lift your hands right where you are don't play yet Kevin God spoke to me about four months ago and I started translating to the leadership of this fellowship. And this is what he said to me. Two words I want you to reflect upon as you prepare for this year's meeting. It's the word miraculous and supernatural. He said, but on the closing night, I want to make a deposit around the world. He said, that's why you will be on live. He said, but what I want to do is start in the auditorium. And then at midnight, I'm going to transfer it around the world. God wants to make a global deposit. Listen to me carefully now. Yes, Lord. Wow. Hmm. He told me, Lord, help me. To arrest the powers of the atmosphere. He said, in that auditorium where I shall drop you, I want you to command every principality and every power of the atmosphere to bow to my son's name. Watch this. And as Wanda was preaching on Wednesday afternoon, there was so much power in the house that the electrical power took a dive and shut down the microphone. You notice I didn't respond publicly. I didn't get nervous because as soon as it happened, the Holy Spirit arrested me. And he says, calm down, son. This is the beginning of the arrest. He says, he says, what first in the natural, then I'm going to show it to you in the spirit. That's the order I'm doing it this time. He says, I want to show you how I will arrest in the spirit all of the powers of the atmosphere. Now, why does he want me to do that? He says, because those of you who will fly tomorrow and fly on Sunday or whenever you are going back, he says, I want you to know this is going to be like the smoothest flight you've ever had 
I said, what all that got to do with it, Lord? He says, because they are flying home into a supernatural atmosphere. Lord, have mercy. I hope you all are hearing me. I said, so Lord, what is it that you want me to do? He says this. He says, I want you to command the principalities and the powers in the atmosphere to shut up at the sound of the name of Jesus. I said, what else is that about? He says, because Satan has a plan. He is not happy, son, with the work that Global is doing around the world. He says, now you've announced you're getting ready to go to South Africa for the first annual gathering. And he had in mind to cause a tragedy. He says, but when you arrested tonight, he said, your arrest in the spirit will save 14,224 lives. Because there are people watching me. Good God Almighty. There are people watching me all around the world that Satan has the same plan for. So I need the church tonight to begin to get out the sound of the name of Jesus. We got to begin calling his name all over this auditorium so I can command. Come on, church. Come on, church. Uh-uh, we got to lift it. We got to lift it. You can't command principalities and powers with a weak voice. Shut up, oh God, 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 oh God. Oh, I need somebody to call out the name of Jesus. Come on, I feel you getting weary. I feel you getting tired. You can't win the war like that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh my, oh my, oh my, the people of God. You're getting weak in that cry. You're getting weak in your call. Come on, if you're in the house tonight, get it out of your mouth, Jesus. Come on, I need to hear the name, Jesus. I need to hear the name, Jesus. I need to hear the name. I, the name. I can't hear the name. Don't sing a song. Don't give a praise. Just call the name. My God, I see some bishops not helping me. This is our assignment. Some of us are afraid of the name of Jesus. Demon tremble at the sound of that name. Wherever you are in Jamaica, wherever you are in Canada, in the Caribbean, in Asia, in the Europe, in Africa, there's power in the name of Jesus. This is how we can end this conference. Because it's not my right, not my power, but by the Spirit of the living God.
This is what the people of God got to do. Because this is what God wants the rest of the world to hear. The sound. That's the will of God for us. We're getting ready to go home. But we're going home in the will of God. Listen to me. The country that we are now in is in trouble. If man had the answer, the country would be fine. They are lost. But don't feel bad, you're not alone. The Bahamas is in trouble. Nations around the world is in trouble. Now y'all have to forgive me, but I still believe in the power of God. And I still believe in miracles and I still believe that a sound in here can fix the country out there anybody else believe that is there anybody else in here other than me believe that while all of us are in here we could solve the nation's problems So I want you to hook up all over this building. Join hands with your brothers and sisters. I'm taking authority tonight. And sometimes God will bring a man from outside of your country to arrest the demon inside the country. That's my assignment tonight. And as I do it, I do it in the presence of the global family. Squeeze your neighbor's hand, tell him I need your help tonight. Uh-uh, y'all ain't talking right. Y'all talking like a bunch of wimps. Tell your brother, tell your sister, I need your help tonight. Tell him in a minute, we gonna call on Jesus one more time. And Bishop Ellis is gonna arrest the demons hanging over this nation. Too much blood is in the street. All right, let me say that one more time because I want the devil to hear me. There is too much blood in the streets. And there's too much black blood in the streets. But I believe the blood of Jesus can bring this problem to a rest. Tell your neighbor, I need your help tonight. I need your help. Find your other neighbor. Tell him I need your help tonight. All right, go back to your first neighbor because that didn't work. Tell him, I need your help tonight. Say, when Bishop Ellis counts to three, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me because you told me the people would help me. All right, tell your neighbor, when Bishop Ellis counts to three tonight, I want you to scream out, Jesus, help us. All right, find another neighbor, because that ain't working. Say, when Bishop Ellis comes to three tonight, I want you to scream out, Jesus, help us. One, two, three. One, two, three. Jesus, help us. One, two, three. Jesus, help us. Now begin to give him the fruit of your lips all over this building. Begin to give him the fruit of the lips. Pray 
praise on it. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Oh my God, I can't get no Christians to help me. Y'all want to solve the problems over this country? Put a praise on it. My God, my God, I feel Jesus in the place.
Make it the best one you got. Open up your mouth. Act like it's already done. And give God the power. I wish I could lay hands on each of you. But just stretch your hands toward me. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, let some drops now even me your hands raise them all up in the air now turn them in your receiving position <laughs> 